Hill. House Speaker John Boehner resigning the speakership as of the end of October. He has been under growing pressure from his right wing. It has been a constant uh, thorn in his side during his time as Speaker. Since the, since the Republicans won control of the House in 2010, he's had to deal with this rambunctious, rebellious group of House members who have threatened him at every turn. Uh, and the latest issue is over whether to fund the government uh, or to risk a government shutdown in a showdown over defunding Planned Parenthood. 909 here, Big 550, KTRS. That uh, Rick Klein, ABC News political analyst, talking about the blockbuster news that came out oh, about a half hour ago, and that is John Boehner, Speaker of the House, resigning. Uh, John Boehner going to walk to the podium at some point. We will carry that live. We have one eye on that. There is a philosophy that he will not come to the podium while Pope Francis is speaking at the General Assembly in the U.N. Pope Francis is currently speaking at the U.N., so we'll wait and see what happens. Rumors are flying who will take over as Speaker of the House. Well, remember, Eric Cantor was the majority leader. He lost a primary vote uh, last uh, year, so he was no longer a majority leader. He stepped down, and they named Kevin McCarthy. Uh, who was the majority whip. He's now second in command. There's a lot of talk that he just might uh, ascend to that top spot as Speaker of the House. He, of course, a Republican from California. We'll just have to wait and see. We've got uh, eyes all over this. When news happens, we will certainly bring it to you. Uh, you are watching us on stltoday.com. Go to the Opinion tab, ktrs.com. We're a partnership with uh, KPLR 11.2. Also, Charter Channel 187. You can watch KPLR 11.2 there. Uh, it's all powered by our friends at Taliesin Technologies. While we're waiting for uh, Speaker Boehner to come to the podium, Joe Miller is a pretty good uh, time filler, ladies and gentlemen. Show me Institute Policy Analyst. Uh, how much did you spend on uh, gas today coming to the Big 550 KTRS? I actually did spend money on gas today because you, I borrowed someone's car to come you here. You borrowed someone's car? I oh, borrowed someone's car. I thought you would have used Uber. <laughs> well, I actually used Uber last Friday. Aha! Uh, it's like basically the second after it came online, I needed to get downtown, and uh, I was very happy to be able to use Uber. It was much faster than having to than any of my other options. Yes. Really. <laughs> uh, who's, whose car did, did you borrow just by uh, chance? I took my fiancé's car. Your fiancé. So you really didn't borrow your car. It's your fiancé's <laughs> car. All right. Good enough. All right, Joe Miller, you are a uh, policy analyst at the Show Me Institute, friend of the show. Uh, you have written an article opposing a post-dispatch guest op-ed piece. Is that safe to say? Well, it's more of opposing a study they decided to write an article on. Okay, there involves, was a study done. Yes, well, um, study, I, I guess you, you could call it a study. <laughs> what, uh, what happened was is some former Harvard business students, I believe they're former Harvard business school students, decided they wanted to sort of look at the stadium plan and see if it was going to be a good bet for St. Louis City. Okay. And, um, you know, basically all the academic economists have come down and said that sports stadiums aren't, they aren't good public investments for cities or states or, or counties or whatever. Right. Um, but their study, according to the Post-Dispatch, said that you know, they, they had found that it would have a positive result. So I was inter interested to see exactly what, what their they, study actually what said. It said. And uh, so these, clearly these people haven't graduated from Harvard Business School yet because their uh, con 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 conclusions are different than any, every single other economist when they study stadiums. Uh, yes, pretty much. And uh, I think, I think, yeah, when, whenever I'm doing studies, I always try to check whether or not things I'm doing are, are fitting with, you know, the general consensus on things, because if they're not, you better have rock solid evidence. And unfortunately, they didn't. And, you know, at the show means too, a lot of what I, I end up looking at is, is issues in St. Louis City. So sometimes I dive really deep into the data. And over the course of the last month, I've been looking at property tax information. And specifically, I found that St. Louis City has a problem that they've hollowed out their property tax base. Okay, explain that. Basically, what happens in St. Louis City is a lot of the property, in fact, most of the property is either owned by the government, is tax exempt, or they've given it tax breaks or put it in a TIF district, which means that if you raise taxes or if property taxes go up, the city doesn't get any more money. And literally a week after I finished some of the last blog post I've written on this, the study claims that basically the stadium's gonna make sense for the city because it's gonna raise property values, which will increase property taxes, 
which will overcome the amount the city pays for the stadium. But if everyone's got a special deal where they're exempt from paying property taxes, raise all the property taxes you want, no one's paying them anyway. That's right. And in the case of the stadium, if you go a mile out, basically they were basing, they based their, their conclusions on a contested idea that, they ra- that stadiums can raise residential property values. And if you go a mile out from the proposed stadium site, very little of it's residential. But even of the stuff, if you just count residential and commercial together, fully 60% of the property by value within a mile of that stadium is either owned by the government, tax exempt, <laughs> or in a TIF district or as a tax abatement. And even worse, like, and this is what we know from Ballpark Village and, 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 um, and everywhere else downtown, is that it doesn't matter if you're across the street from a stadium or not, whether or not it's a good location. They will give you a tax abatement if you want it in right. St. Louis City. Like, Ballpark Village got a tax abatement. Anything new going up around the statement is going to get a tax abatement. If you think that the city is going to get more property tax value in the future, I mean, you're just not looking at the way St. Louis policy is done. Joe Miller brings up an interesting point. Show me Institute Policy Analyst. So much so that, isn't it, Laclede Gas got a tax benefit some type of property tax or some type of tax benefit to move Laclede gas closer to Ballpark Village? Well, they just they, they just wanted they basically got a deal to move down the street. And Laclede gas is a utility. They're not going anywhere. It's not like they can move. The worst they could do is move to the county, which really doesn't affect the regional economy at all. Right. But like, you know, so they move down the street and they get a tax abatement. The the bottom line is in St. Louis City, if you are big and you are if you are large if you're doing a large development, commercial or residential, and you're doing it where the city wants you to do it, you're going to get a tax abatement. I mean, even in the Central West End, like so the nicest parts of the Central West End, they give out tax abatements. It, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is the exception rather than the rule not to get a tax abatement on a large development. So, 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 yeah. so you're, a, you're a stooge if you're actually paying property taxes in the city of St. Louis. <laughs> well, you know, actually, the, the, the place where people actually are not where it's unadulterated, the property tax is mostly the south and southwest sides of the city, which are single family uh, or or small lot houses. Right, right. And Everyone else is 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 got their hand out, or or, or a city property already. That was one issue you had with this study. Any other issues with this study you had? Well, that was the biggest because that was actually their their assumption is that property tax increases will cover three quarters of the positive benefit. For the, for the city. But there are other things too. Like, they basically assume that we're going to get an MLS team. They just assume that. Right. <laughs> they also assume that we're going to get all these new events coming into the stadium. I guess they think that because we get a new stadium, Taylor Swift's going to stay in town an extra couple days. Uh, right. I don't know. <laughs> but, like, you know, they're, they don't bring up the, the obvious fact that if, if the stadium gets a concert, it's competing with the Shea Fitz Arena or the Scott Trade Center right. or any other venue in the city. But that's uh, substitution. The idea that people might spend their money elsewhere or events might go elsewhere is just not really a prominent feature of that study and it really sinks the whole thing and academic economists usually take these things into account and this is why academic economists don't find that stadiums well, have and, these types of benefits and it isn't like it's a new team it's an no. existing team so so all of those benefits of raising property values and all, already exists or don't exist. Or, or don't exist, right. In the right. case of the Edward Jones Dome, or even Bush Stadium, it would be pretty hard to argue that property tax values, even, like, maybe you could say right across the street are a little bit higher, but, you know, I mean, Edward Jones Dome, area around it is is not is not well developed the property tax values have not gone up and the study kind of did a hand waving gesture on why they just didn't plan it well enough last time and that's why it didn't work but right. to me that's 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 the same thing you hear from planners all the time everybody who came before us was stupid and didn't know what they're doing but we got it right now and that's why this is going to work and and you know they'll be saying the same thing 10 years from now joe miller when uh how can we read your story about this study well you can go to showmeinstitute.org and click on our blog and Everything we've got up is right there. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Miller, show me Institute Policy Analyst. Always a pleasure. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for having me. You got it. It's uh, coming up. It's uh, eight nineteen. John Boehner going to speak at some point. Currently, right now, Pope Francis is uh, speaking to the UN General Assembly. John Boehner, if you're just joining us, announced that he will be st- he will be stepping down at uh, he will be stepping down as Speaker 